Today we're going to talk about strain rosettes, rectangular and delta, and we're going to get into more circle and strain space. So I hope everyone's excited. So um, all of the examples we've done so far, our strain gauges have been aligned with our coordinate system, um, and basically along principal directions. And we know that we can only directly measure um, with strain gauges. We can only measure normal strain, i.e., one, two, two, not equals one, one, two, two. We haven't figured out, okay, well, how do we measure, you know, again, shear strains? We can't really measure those with strain gauges directly. But instead, we're going to use this combination of uh, strain gauges, basically a strain rosette, uh, rectangular or delta, a combination of basically three to four strain gauges that's going to allow us to deduce these kind of um, shear strain values. Now, uh, the other utility of this is what happens if I have a material, and I'm looking at, I'm sure you're trying to figure out, and it has like, maybe there's a micro crack in here, or maybe there's like a weld, or some kind of strange geometry. How am I going to kind of figure out, I know that there's kind of a change, like there's stress concentrators. Well, you can use FEM, or you can, you know, to kind of model that, or kind of see how the stress is going to be concentrated, although it'd be very difficult. But one way we could do it is by, again, putting a strain gauge or strain rosette directly near that, you know, defect, weld, micro crack, etc. And it's going to be this combination of these, uh, three strain gauges, um, and then we're going to use, again, more circle in, uh, basically in strain space in order to kind of measure these values. So this configuration of three strain gauges is a strain rosette. Um, there's multiple types, but in this course, we're going to focus on uh, two types in particular, rectangular uh, and delta, uh, or equilibrium rosette. And you can kind of see those below. Actually, let's go ahead and look at that. So these are the strain rosettes. So you put, you know, you can kind of imagine, I'm going to put this like this. I'm going to call this R. I'm going to call this, really, it's a delta rosette. Um, so if you have a material, and if I have like a weld again, or something strange here, I could just slap on right at this location my R value or my delta or my delta rosette, this combination of these kind of strain gauges. And we're going to be able to measure strain in these three arms, A, B, and C. And you can see the difference here. The rectangular rosette, the angle between A and B is 45. Angle between A and C is 90, as indicated by this right triangle right here. Angle between B and C is 45, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So these arms are offset at a particular angle, and that's going to be critical in order for us to, again, use more circle and figure out these rotations. The equilangular uh, strain rosette, same idea here, except now we have an A arm, B arm, C arm, just the same as usual, but now angle between A and B is 60, angle between A and C is 120. B and C is 60, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to use these relationships and these fixed angles, and we're going to measure normal strains in each of these arms, and we're, we're going to use this, you know, again, this fixed geometry, this fixed constraint uh, in these angles, these offset angles, in order to figure out all the different strain values that we could ever hope for. So we're going to figure out what is our, uh, basically, our nominal or our principal strain state. We're going to look at when does our strain, you know, shear strain is maximized, et cetera, et cetera, all these kind of different angles. So I think the best way to do this is with an example. So in the next video, we are going to look at how to uh, basically use these strain rosettes uh, and work them through an example problem. I think that's the, the nicest way in order to kind of figure this out. All right, I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye.